so when you how did you get the news that you were drafted and, and tell me tell me a little bit about how that well i got a letter from the governor mm -hmm. uncle sam wants you and a certain date you had to go to wood Prayer because he wanted you and you had to go you were going to jail if you didn't so i went up to wood Prayer, and that's when i volunteered i could they were at looking for sailors so i volunteered for the navy i was a naval reserve ussr that's what we call them, U U.S. Navy Reserves. And that's when I went into the Navy. And worked right from there, I went to boot camp. And uh, New York, damn it, I can't remember that boot camp. I, believe. I served in there. I had to go through boot camp there. Do you remember how long it was? Do you remember how long it was? I was in boot camp for eight to ten weeks. And then I got a leave, seven day leave. I went home. And I had a report to, to Solomon Islands, Maryland. To an LCI, Force 461 mm -hmm. was the uh, LCI. And. Um Landing Craft Infantry 461. And how long did you, were you on that ship? I was, I went through basic training with it, and they were heading for the South Pacific. The night they were heading, I come down with a, with a, uh, some kind of sickness. Uh, oh, a throat inflammation and very bad cold. So I begged the captain to let me go with him, but he wouldn't. He wouldn't allow it because they were heading for the Pacific, and I'm glad. I, they had six to seven invasions that I missed. And they went to the Pacific without me. They had to bring They took me to the hospital. I was in a hospital down there. I was very sick, hmm. over fever and everything else. When I got out of the hospital, I, joined, I went to New York, to the 487. I was drafted to go into the 487 LCI, mm -hmm. and I went on there. The first ship you were on, um, what 461, the 461 was what, an LCI. What was your role? What, what did you? I was seaman first class. Okay. Um, so 461. I was seaman first class. And what was the second ship? LCI 487. I was still seaman first class. And how long, did you, how long were you on that ship? Mm, over a year, I guess. Do you, where, do you remember where you went or what you did on it? Like... We, we cruised around here for a while and then we, we went to Norfolk. And Christmas Eve, of 1943, we headed for Europe. 80 ships. We were in a convoy. Every night they were blasting them down. They were blasting what down? We were in that convoy. What they did, because we had a flat bottom, they sent us out to, to surround these ships because they couldn't torpedo us. Mm -hmm. We had no bottom. So we were out there guarding them things. They were shot, knocking them down anyway. We couldn't do nothing with them. And how long were you in Europe for? For there, it took 23 days to go from Norfolk to Falmouth Island, England. 23 days, we bobbled up and down at six knots. No bottom, flattened up and down with a bobbin around. It seemed like forever we were gonna get there. And we were lucky because if we run into a submarine, I asked the captain, what do we do? He's got three inch guns. He said, we ram them. Because we had a 20 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. And this guy had three inch guns, man. He could send out, out there and bomb every one of us. We were lucky we didn't run into it because they were out there. We were fortunate. When you left to go to Europe, did you know what your fate was gonna be? Did you, were, you ready, no. were you ready for war? No. I didn't. I knew we were going to be in trouble. If we, the, the war was going on in, in England. They were bombing England. I knew we were. 
but they didn't tell us where we were, what we were going to do. But with that flat bottom, most of us had an idea we were going to go up on a beach someplace, but we didn't know where. So we went into Norfolk and we trained for almost six months before we hit the beach. We trained landing troops in England on the beaches. Then I knew we were heading for Normandy. I knew then that we were going to hit. I didn't know what part of Normandy, what beach they didn't tell us, but I knew we were heading for Normandy. I didn't know we were going to hit the toughest beach was Omaha. And how old were you at this point? How old were you at this point? I, at that point, I was 19. So as a 19-year-old heading towards war, how was that feeling? I was scared a little bit because, you know, we knew we were going to have to go in there. And they, they were in there for four or five years. I knew they had guns everywhere. And the concrete emplacements, they were, oh, man. They had 11 million mines all over that place. We were going in between mines with the ship. We were looking. We were trying to shoot them. And that's good we didn't because some of our guys would have got hurt if they exploded. We were going on these poles. We were going between these poles and the guy, we were shooting at them. Good job we didn't hit them. It would explode it. So you went from uh, the 487, you, then did you come back to Norfolk? No. Went to the 487, abandoned my ship. Why? Well, about 50 to 25 yards out, they gunned us down. They start with their long range 88s. And the first one hit the port side. I was up on the bow gun. And uh, the port side got hit. It killed the lieutenant and it won't, I don't know how many got nailed there, but a lot of wounded because some of them, they got, they were on the ramps and they got nailed. The second one or two hit the bow and it knocked me right out of the gun down on the deck. What is LCI? Landon Craft Infantry. And um, you had mentioned in your letter uh, 93? That's the Coast Guard ship. We abandoned that one, the second one. That's He took 10 direct hits while we were on it. Mm -hmm. The shells were coming through the bulkheads. So it, you started on 461. Yeah. Uh, and did. then you went into, into war with the 487. Right. And then um, it took on fire, and you are. Uh, uh, you were being, it was being blasted. Okay, and uh, you had to abandon ship. Yeah. Um, right there in the water, or how did how, how did you how did you learn that you had to abandon ship? What 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 happened? Tell, tell me about that. Well, they 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 zeroed in on. They were hitting us. And with what? With eighty eight. That's the heavy artillery. Was one of the best guns made in in World War Two. Terrific. They start bombing us. So then the guy starts screaming to the captain, which he turned around, he said, abandon ship. Were you, was the boat sinking? Was the ship sinking? No, but we were out, the water was heavier. What he done, he made a mistake. He left the anchor out too late and we were stuck in there. We couldn't get off oh, wow. and then we got it. But while we couldn't get off, we were getting nailed. So what we did, I, Jumped off the fantail, that's the back of the ship. I jumped in, took my life jacket, threw it in first, and dove in and swam into the beach. Had all these gas clothes on. We had gas masks and everything. We thought we were going to get gas, boots, everything. And I, I'm, I'm on the bottom of the water, ripping this stuff off, trying to get to the top. I know that when I come to the top, there was blood coming out of my mouth because I was under there too long. But then I swam into the beach because we were out in heavy water by that time because the tide was coming in. And I swam into the beach and run through that minefield. And it did, tells you right here. Did you, um, did you have um, any, any of your buddies with you? Um, were, were there people, were you trying to help each other get to the, to the, to the land? Some of the guys went off first but I, I had to go last because I was the gunner's mate and I was handing out the guns to everybody. You know, here's a pistol and here it is. And I took a Thompson sub. It was kind of heavy.
running through that minefield was so heavy it was weighing me down and I threw it down and I just took off and jumped over these wires and whatever was laying there. But there was a lot of dead people in the water and all over the place. So you jumped off the ship and you basically I swam, swam into, to, into the beach. And were you swimming around mines as well in the water? There was mines in there. And some of the guys went through the, mi through the water and they got away with it. They didn't run into any mines. See, my friend Coulter went to the water. It was safer, they figured, to go through the water. But I went down the beach and that was too, too rough because they were shooting at us while we were running down the beach. It tells you right in there. Where Malin was behind me, and it, later on he told me that, as it tells you in there, the sand was propped between my legs. He didn't know how I, that guy didn't cut me down. He said, I said, because he was running alongside with me, that's why. And I was jumping over those mines running through there, whatever was in front of me, wires and all, and I was jumping over them. And there were some guys coming in behind me. And in fact, one of them was our cook. He was an elderly guy, and I passed him, and I, he was down, I pulled him up, and said, come on, I can't stay with him because he was too slow. I figured they're going to machine gun the hell out of us. So I got him up, and I kept going, and later on he made it too. He, he done made it. But they made the going to the 93. That's when we took it. Ten direct hits while we were on it. On the 93? Yeah. Then we abandoned there. So um, you did the 40, you uh, abandoned ship on uh, the 47, you ran along the beach. Right. How did, how did you get back to the water, or how did you know to get back to the, get to well, the 93? The, the 93 was coming in, and my buddy, Jim Fisher, my good friend from New York, <laughs> he, he was a signalman, and he contacted 93. Will you take us aboard? Which they made a big mistake. What the Germans done, they've seen us leaving my ship, they followed us down to the 93, and boy, did he get it. He was on fire and everything. He got nailed bad because they followed those guys going down. They were shooting at us while we were going in, and then they got the 93, and they laid it on it. He had to abandon his ship because he would, in fact, it burned up later. That ship burned up in 93. They were taking parts later when the war was over, taking them off of there. But that's when some of us hit the water and some small boat come in and picked them up. Some in the water and some got in the small boat. And then they took us to the destroyer, which was not too far away, and they took us aboard the destroyer. And that de them destroyers come along. They were almost grounded, and they were fighting with them 5-inch 38 shells. They were blasting them concrete billards that they had in there. And when they'd come running out, I was on them. I was watching them. They machine gun them as they come coming out of, the, out of these here holes. And that was that. And uh, what was the destroyer? What? USS Doyle. 494 was the, the number of it. They took us aboard. We couldn't climb up the ladder because we were worn out being in that cold water. So they helped us aboard. They helped us get up there. And how long were you on the 494? Gee, I don't know. All, 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 most of the day okay. after that till the night. So this is your third ship in the same day? Yes. I got on the 93 and I stayed on the 94, 494 destroyer. In fact, later on, I went up and I was helping them throw some of their empty shells overboard because they needed them. They were all over the deck. We were throwing them out of the way. If after I shook, you know, I got sh straightened out a little bit because I was shook up. I mean, it seems like you had been through quite a bit yeah. that you know, previous to the day. Do you remember the timing? Was it dark? Was it was it early morning? Was it late night? Was it? Did you have any sense of time? I thought it was six o'clock, but we went in the first wave of the LCIs. The LCVPs went in before us. So what is that? That's the landing craft, little boats. They take six, 50 or 60 troops in and land them in. We came in with hundreds. We could carry 200. The, the Germans knew that. 
So they were waiting for us to come in. When we got near the beach, that's when they laid it on. The, the 88 was sunk, hit a mine. They, I remember the 88 near us, she hit a mine and she went down. And they, they took a schlack and the LCIs, they really pinned on them. So that's when we got in it. I don't remember what time it was, to tell you the truth. I wasn't worried about time then. Do you remember, uh, what, do you, do you remember, what, was it all, was it dark the whole time? I'm just going to try to get a sense of what time, or like a day, it was, do you remember it being, it, it was being light out? foggy and raining. Oh, okay. Very, it was light, but it was foggy and it was raining. Because we hit it dawn. I don't know if we all did, but the LVP, we went in after them. But the LCI's first wave I went in with, the LCI's. What was the original plan? Were you supposed to take boats into the... We were supposed to get up there and let these troops off on the, on the beach and back it out and go back and get more. But like I say, he left the anchor out too quick, and he knew it later. He left it out. That's why he didn't get no medal. And uh, he left it out, and we were stuck there. We were jammed in. We weren't going nowhere. And that's when we were getting hit, and he abandoned. We, he said abandoned ship, and away we went. What was your thought? Uh, here you are, 19 years old, and all of a sudden you hear what, an announcement or something that says abandoned ship? I didn't mind swimming because I could swim good. But going through that minefield is what worried me. I was scared to death going through that minefield. I was afraid of stepping on one of them. Because there was dead bodies everywhere, in the water and on the beach. Tell you the truth, I was so scared I didn't see half of them. I probably jumped over many of them. They were laying there. But I kept on going, you know. And the only thing I stopped to pull him off the front. He, he was down. I picked him up and said, come on. I kept going. The cook, do you remember his name? Uh, yeah, he was a uh, Puerto Rican. Zagalas? Zagalas, I think his name was. And he had a, a, a restaurant in New York. So he told everybody to come to New York to get a free meal after we got ashore, you know, later. Everybody was safe. Did you and him ever have a conversation about that experience on the, on the, on the beach? With some of the guys, oh yeah. When I visited down south to Coulter and, and Dub, we talked about it. Me and Coulter were good friends. He was the boatswain mate, and I was the, sec the gunner's mate, second class. So we were pretty friendly. See, I had to keep my guns clean and the deck clean, and naturally he had the deck to be clean, so he, we were buddies, him and I, very good friends. He's still alive. He's down in Georgia. How old is he? He's not good. He's got a bad heart. How old is he? He's, he's younger than me, so he'd be about 91, I guess. Hmm. Um, so, let's see. You're... Now on the, the 490, the Doyle, yeah. the destroyer, um, you're throwing off the shells off of the ship. What happens next? I was taken, taken off the Doyle and sent to England. And how did you get to England? Well, it's one of the ships, I don't know which one it was, that took us to England, some of us. Some of them that, that took us to England, some of them. And then I was left home for a 30-day leave because I lost the ship. And I bet you, uh, Grandma? One night in England, in Wayman, England, we are in an air raid one night. The Germans are dropping bombs right into the town, and we're tied up four ships. We are the end one to the water. I was in the gun, and the captain hollered, man your lines. My number line was number one on the bow. I got out of the gun, told somebody else to take over, and I run up to take the line off so we could go out. 
hit in the water, they can't hit us that easy because we can start maneuvering around. So as I got out of there, a shell landed. They were shooting at this plane. They couldn't hit it anyway. It was too high with the 20 millimeters. And one of them landed right in where I was, right in the gun tub. It exploded. It got Yakum. It didn't kill him. Him and Bud and Davy, they were wounded. Well, they took him out of there. After we got out to sea, we went out there. They took him down and took care of him in the mess hall. And the next morning, I went over because I have to take care of these guns to clean them. I'm gunner's mate. Where I was in, strapped in the gun and cut the ammunition half bag right in half. It would have cut me in half. That was a close one that I had there. That was very close. And I remember that. That that one. And then air raid. They were dropping bombs. In fact, they killed a girl when a bomb exploded somewhere and they killed somebody in the town. They were dropping them at night. They were trying to find us. Every night they were trying to knock out the L LCIs. And the, the infant, in fact, we, they knew we were going to have to land them, you know. So they were looking for us every night. We have to keep moving from one place to the other. Um, so then you uh, you went to England. You had 30 days. You, you came back home. I came back on one of the general ships. I don't know what, what it was anymore. I forgot it. And you had 30 days of, of uh, rest and freedom. What did you do? Well, they took me in the hospital when I first come, come home. I had to go to St. Albans, New York Hospital. They, they, want, they wanted to keep me there because I was really in rough shape, you know, shaking. No, when, if everything dropped, I was... And they wanted to keep me, and I, I told the psychiatrist, I said, no, I need to go home, that's all. I just want to go home. You send me home, I'll be okay. So I talked this guy to let me go home. And that really helped me out. And I, I got home, I got a 30-day leave. I said, I better go back, the war's still on. I, I'll probably be heading for the Pacific, I said, before this is over. But anyway, I went back. I got on a train in Newark to go to Washington. It took eight hours to go by train. Today it takes only a couple. Now I'm over leave. I got my papers with me. Here comes an MP and an SP. That's SP is Navy. The MP is Army. They're checking papers. I went in the bathroom. I figured maybe they'll go by me. They knocked on the door. I come out. I hand them the paper. The MP, the Navy guy, wants to take me in. If they take you in, it's worse. They lay it on you. For what? If you oh, if you're over leaving them, if they take in, if you come in by yourself, you have a chance. But if you go in with them, the gout, they're gonna nail you. So this trumpet trail said, "Hey, the guy just got out, and just lost two ships. It's right on here." What the hell you want? He said, "Let him go." Are you gonna go in now? I said, "Yeah, I'm going right into the Navy headquarters down there in Virginia." He said, "Go in, Pat, because they'll nail you." You wound up in jail. I said, I'm going in. He said, go in. They'll be lenient with you. I said, I'm going. So he said to the MP, let him go. Don't, we're not taking him. You go. You go in, Pat. So I go. Here I'm coming into the routine. How late were you? Huh? How late were you? Five or six days. Okay. What were you, what were you doing th during those five or six days? I'm drinking like Dr a fish. I drunk all the time in the honey pot in the firehouse. <laughs> drunk, I'm trying to forget my problems. <laughs> Drinking like a fish. So when I get into the receiving station, I know I'm gonna. They're gonna MP me. They put you pre on on your shirt and your back. You know. Prisoner. They put what? They put prisoner on you. Pete, oh. your prisoner. Oh. I go in and them. Chief Petty Officer, he said, Jesus, he said, what the hell happened to you? I said, I didn't want to come back. I said, he said, I could see why, he said. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to make it easy for you. He said, me 
God, you lost those two ships. You went through hell, boy. He said, I heard stories about that place. He said, people on that beach died that day, many of them. Said, I'm going to give you a break. He sent me to a receiving station. Clear. I went in. First thing you know, the next morning, somebody come and hand me papers. What's this? You have to report to Anacosta, Anacosta Maryland, to a gunnery school. You have to learn 5-inch 38s. I said, uh-oh, I'm heading for the Pacific, aren't I? He said, yep, pretty soon. You better go in there. They're going to teach you in a couple of weeks how to handle 5-inch 38s like a big shell like that. Mm -hmm. It kills at 8 miles. It's a, oh, she's a big sucker. Heavy son of a could bitch. It, could it, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a handheld. Yeah, yeah. You put it in and then get this big powder. Could it sink a ship? Oh, she get anything with oh, that okay. sucker. She kills at eight miles. Mm -hmm. She's a killer at eight. So, okay, I go to the gunnery ship. Uh, what year is this? That would be 44. Two, two weeks I was supposed to be there. Maybe longer. I go there two weeks. They sent me back to the receiving station. I get to the receiving station. There's two shore, shore patrol men waiting for me. What the hell is this? He said, they need a gunner's mate on the Soli. One, he's sick. So we're, you're, we're, you're the only one around here. Second class gunner, you go. Report to the Soli. They will take you down there. Get in the Jeep. Took me down to the Soli. Tommy, you never felt how good I was that day. I got my ribbons on me, my battle star, everything. I come aboard this ship. It's a new ship, and none of them seen any combat. They were all rookies. So I come up the ladder, saluted. You have to salute first. Yes. May I come aboard, sir? Yes, please come aboard. You salute him, you salute the flag. There was a couple guys standing over, and I heard the one guy, look at that sucker, he got a bottle. He was on Omaha Beach, look at him. Boy, I was keen for there <laughs> for a while. Oh, now I'm the second class gunner. Sure enough, he puts me in the five inch 38s when we, oh, by the way, we go to San Diego. We stopped in San Diego, next morning we heard we're going ashore. The only thing, I got restricted. That's what I did. I, I didn't get away with clear. I was restricted to the, to the ship, and I was restricted for 30 days or something like that anyway. As a punishment for being five or for, six days? For being so late, okay. five days. I didn't get away. Scott free? Yeah. So we're going aboard. Now, tomorrow morning, we're heading out. So some of these new guys, they said, Come on, we'll get you ashore. Because we're leaving for the Pacific and we know we're going to go into combat. So I said, how am I going to? We'll get up there and we'll hide you behind one of them garbage cans on the beach. He said, we were looking at it. So anyway, how about a card? We got a phony card. Now these are my shipmates. Do you remember their names? No. Okay. So that. They're talking to the officer so I can get by him. Slip away, I get off. We go into town. Boy, did we get drunk. So I bought a bottle of seven, Seagram seven, I'm taking it with me. I come in because they, they, got, they have to guard you when you're coming into the gate. I put it in the back of my back like this. He hit me this way, but he didn't hit me in the When I went by, the other one grabbed him. Look at it. He's got a bottle in back there. I took off. So I'm running around the barracks. You know, I'm trying to get away from them. They grabbed me. And the one guy said, look, take the bottle. Let him go. He's, they're leaving tomorrow. He may never come back because they're gone. They're going to fight the war out there. One sailor said, let him go. He said, well, now he's going to have a hard time getting aboard his ship anyway. He'll probably get caught. So they let me, but here come some of my shipmates. And I said to them, see, I'm waiting for them guys. Yeah, you go with them guys. 
and they said, get him aboard. So they watched in the when there was room, I snuck aboard. That was my last liberty in San Diego. We went out to the Pacific. How long did it take you to get out there? Oh, a long time. I had to go through the Panama Canal, and they raised the ships up, you know, and boy, what a, what something to see you never seen. Flat. They raised the ship. And out there is fresh water before it hits to the ocean. So we go through the Panama Canal. I got one of my guns down, and I got a striker. He's going to try to be a gunner's mate. So him and I are, it's nighttime, and I got it apart, but I was good at it. I put that thing together at night, him and I, and it was ready to go. We went through there. I don't know, where the hell I went through? But anyway, we was out there to the Pacific. I don't know, we stopped in a few different places. The first thing you know, we go into Kusai Island. The Japs have it. They want to surrender to us, the, the, to the ship. They're starving out there. We pull in, it was into the cove, and they opened up with the long, with the big guns on us as we got into the cove. Well, we started on them, but we called in for air support, and our navy, or the army and navy gunners come in and they laid it on them, you know. So the white flag went up again, but we made the officers come out in a small boat to us, to the destroyer. And they came out. I got a picture where they're signing the place over to us. Now they got war criminals on there, 15 of them. They shot down some of our flyers and ate them. They didn't have no food. We hung them suckers in Quadrilene later on. But I guarded them suckers. For 15, I had 15 of them down below deck. I was in there with a sawed-off shotgun, and my friend Martin was on top with a machine gun, Thompson sub. So out of a blue sky at one, we got them in naked because they would have killed themselves. They, they knew they were criminals. He come out of the bunk, and I said to him, back off. And the guy in the middle, in the corner, said to him, I didn't know it was him. He wants to use the latrine, they call that in the Navy, or the Army latrine, we call it the head. He wants to use, and Martin said, who the hell's talking to you? I said, you, that wasn't me, buddy. He said, one of them son of a bitches down there can talk better than you and I. So I said to him, all right, who are you? I'm Colonel so-and-so. I said, tell him to come towards me with his hand on his head. And if he blinks his eyes, I'm going to blow his head off. Martin said, watch him, watch him. I said, you watch him with that machine gun up there, too. So I back off. I said, take him up to the head. So he took him. He's coming back down. I said, all right, now, till I got, tell him to get back in his bunk. But I said to him, who the hell are you? I'm Colonel so-and-so. Where did you learn how to talk English? He said, I went to UCLA. And I went to visit my people for Christmas, and the war broke out, and the Japs took me in the army. He made colonel. I said, we're going to hang you, son of a bitch, as you know that, for eating them guys. We hung them. Later on, I found out when we were in, in near Japan, one of our officers, our captain, said, we hung those bastards, 15 of them. They ate some of our boys. They were starving. So I was guarding Japs on the way into Japan. And then when I was in Japan, I was guarding. I was chasing them GIs and sailors and out of the Ngishi houses. Get them out of here. Boy, they with their shoes, they have to take their shoes off. You see all the shoes. They run out barefoot, some of them. They didn't have no shoes. They were afraid we'd lock them. We would lock them up. So then I stayed there for a while, and they offered me chief, chief gunner's mate if I stayed in for 30 years. But I said, I had enough. I'm going home. I was engaged and wanted to get married.
behalf of the President of the United States, the United States Navy, and a grateful nation, please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved ones honorable. Yeah.